Welcome to Let's Talk this morning. So this morning we have guest speaker, Pastor John Robinson at the Bible Believers Baptist Church down in Hillsborough, Oregon. And today's topic, we're gonna to be talking about ministering in the Northwest, you know, specifically up here in this region. And uh, Pastor John, thank you so much for being here. Um, kind of talk about what it was kind of for you when you went and kind of started your church, you know, about 11 years ago. Um, just down in Oregon, you kind of just went cold turkey and went down there and said, here we go. Yeah, yeah. So I was, as you know, my wife and I were here at, at Open Door Baptist as a part of the church coming out of Bible Institute after I graduated. I came here in 2009 and we had work here. So that was kind of the main reason we came here, uh, construction work at the time. But uh, wanted to be in a good church, wanted to be involved in whatever ministry capacity we could. So we just jumped in. I think we helped out with some of the youth stuff here and got to know the staff, got to know Pastor Murphy in the church. And in 2010, an opportunity uh, came up to where a, a friend of mine that I knew, he asked me if I'd ever thought about coming to Oregon, starting a church, which I, I hadn't really thought about starting a church, but I had had Oregon on my mind, on my heart, during you know, when I was in my, in my last year of school. And so what we did was we basically took a little survey trip down to Oregon, at the time that I've been uh, praying about Oregon, I've been thinking primarily about Southern Oregon, a little more conservative, a little more uh, maybe what I was used to. I really never had Portland or the Portland area on my mind at that time, but really uh, going down there and seeing that there was a, a really big need on the west side of the Portland community, and then knowing that there was a couple of people there that had really had a desire for a Bible-believing church in that area, uh, what I did was I told them, you know, you guys put together a place to meet. You put together some folks that will come out, and I'll come down there and teach and preach. And we ended up having our first Bible study service um, October 10th, 2010. So 10, 10, 10 was our first service, and uh, it just kind of it kind of just evolved from there, if, so to speak, if I can use that word. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, it's definitely awesome. I mean, it's like you said, it's... Uh not necessarily the most conservative area, obviously us being here, just, you know, north of Seattle and you just being west of Portland, not necessarily the Bible hotbed no. of our country. <laughs> um, but it's that same thing that where you realize that, you know what, there's souls that just need to be saved yeah. no matter where you're at. And you just go kind of where the Lord has directed you and guided you. Yeah. Um, what have you found, you know, with the people down there um, in the Portland area, Hillsboro, uh, receptive to the gospel, open to the gospel, and then kind of as a second part of the question, kind of what it's been like this last year from yeah. what it's been, you know, in the last eight years while you're down there. Well, as you know, in the Northwest in general, there, there's kind of a strong animosity towards the gospel, towards God, you know, towards authority in general. And so uh, living in Seattle, I realized that Seattle uh, has its own flavor and Portland has a flavor altogether different, uh, similar, but definitely different in a lot of ways. The Portland community in and of itself uh, is, kind of prides itself on, you know, strangeness, being weird. Mm -hmm. uh, it was kind of trendy to be you know, a little bit odd in the Seattle area, but Portland is just, you know, whatever goes. It's completely weirdness. You know, they, they have the model, keep Portland weird, and they do a really good job of it down there. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, in general, being around some of the folks in the Northwest, having grown up in the Northwest in Oregon myself, um, it's something I was a little more used to than maybe some of the other parts of the country where I've been culturally speaking, you know, the South, the Bible Belt, mm -hmm. the Midwest, you know, it's strongly conservative. Uh, being in the Portland area ha has been something I'm used to, but probably wasn't quite ready for the degree of strangeness that it was. The one thing about the, the folks in the Northwest um, that I found, particularly in Portland, is that they, they do not have any apologies for believing what they believe. So mm -hmm. the one thing that I really appreciate about ministering in the Northwest is you're going to deal with people and you, you know what they believe and you know it very quickly. You know where they stand. Mm -hmm. uh, they may be completely diametrically opposed to what we would hold to be true. Uh, some of our values, of course, from the Bible, just you know, uh, kind of more of a conservative background altogether. But these folks, they, they don't have anything, you know, in common with us in many ways. But at the same time, the one thing I really appreciate about ministering to those folks, um, you know, folks in general, the, the culture that is in the Northwest is that people will definitely let you know what they think. They'll let you know where they stand. And there's not going to be any, you know, slipping around <laughs> it or, you know, none of that Southern 
They're not no. going to try to hoodwink you or yeah. they're not, they're not just going to be hospitable because they're, they're just going to flat out say it is, which yeah. like you said, it's definitely easy to witness to them because you know right where their background is or where they're coming from kind of right off the For bat sure. and kind of you're able to just kind of gauge that and go from there with ministering to them or witnessing to them. Yeah, we don't have to beat around the bush with, you know, with folks. I mean, they, they make a statement. This is where I'm at. This is where I am. You know, statements like there is no God, you know, religion is, you know, whatever. And, and so they just kind of put it out there and now you have something you can work with. So you bring up, you know, you try to start witnessing. People say, I don't believe that stuff. Well, you can get right into it. Why not? You know, what, what is it that causes you to mm-hmm. believe that? Instead of kind of dancing around the idea, well, I, I believe in God, or I'm a, you know, I grew up in church, or those kinds of things, or I'm a believer, you know, I have faith. It's nothing, it's not really like that, culturally speaking. So you're dealing with folks who, uh, they are very, very set in their ways, uh, but at the same time, uh, they have they have no problem talking about why they're that way. And then you can kind of start dismantling what it is that they're putting their confidence in. You know, mm-hmm. they're very, very sure and convinced that there is no God. Well, how can you be so sure? What What is it that led you to that conclusion? So I like being direct. I like just getting right into the mix of things. Mm-hmm. And so that part of the, the Northwest ministry has really, I've, I've enjoyed it a lot. I, I like to just get right into it with folks and find out where they're coming from, find out what they're thinking, and then start revealing the truth to them from the Word of God. And, you know, a lot of folks, they won't really consider the Bible to be an authority, but some of these people that I've dealt with, you know, over the last 10 years or so, if you actually can get them to consider the fact that it's possible that there might be something of value in the Bible, and then you're actually able to open up and show them maybe some scripture, things that are undeniable, mm. then uh, you can kind of start a conversation from there. And it, a lot of times you'd be surprised where it go. Maybe not necessarily a conversion on the spot, but certainly gives people something to think about. So Definitely planting some seeds or yep. watering seeds that have been planted before. And, For sure. Um, that's awesome. Well, what would you say to maybe a young guy that maybe is called to come start a church in the Northwest or a guy that might be watching or that's in a church now that might be thinking about going out? To start a church, what kind of advice would you give him that you did that? So what kind of advice would you give him? I would probably say don't do things the way I did it. <laughs> uh, we, we really had no plan. We had no real um, uh, you know, collaborative effort. We, we, just, we were here as a part of this church, but I was praying about Oregon, so when an opportunity came up, we just kind of jumped at it. And um, I, I know this, that it's not easy to, to really scratch out an existence here in the Northwest. There's a, there's a great need, uh, but I would say as far as advice or maybe counsel, I'd say definitely get together with uh, some folks who you know are going to have your back, uh, your, you know, your local church, uh, some ministries that, that know you and that you know, you know that they're uh, you know, associated with, with the same position we have on the gospel and doctrine. And get those folks uh, to basically support you in the sense of at least know you're there, pray for you, help come and be a, a blessing. Uh, we've had support from Open Door Baptist Church at the very beginning we did. And uh, there's also been some, uh, some folks that I've known, gotten to know in the Northwest that it's been a real great, um, just a real great help having people that you can have pray for you. Mm-hmm. I encourage you to stop in and visit, you know, have come in and minister with you. Um, but but also really there's there's some things about being in the Northwest that you need to remember the Northwest culture like we said is different so mm-hmm. if you're from the Northwest you already know that if you're not from this area you definitely want to keep that in mind coming to the Pacific Northwest in general you have people who are uh, you know generationally now they're independent generationally they come from fractured families the family structure. Mm-hmm. Uh, unfortunately, it's now worldwide, but especially here in the Northwest for, for you know, decades, the, the whole um, kind of the nuclear family type of aspect mm-hmm. doesn't exist here. Uh, you have broken homes. You have people whose ideas of marriage are definitely not traditional. You have all kinds of different beliefs. So if you, if you think that you're going to come in and, and really beat that over people's head here in this area, you're going to end up really kind of turning a lot of people off. So you have to be in some way, acceptant of the fact that they're different, um, and then and then recognize that so you're not putting an expectation on folks or on even on yourself or what you had in mind uh, when you get here. It's going to be different. You know, you're going to need some help. You're going to need some support. But really, for the most part, what we did was we just tried to teach whoever would listen 
-hmm. Just teach them from the Word of God. So just focus on the Bible, giving them the truth of the Scripture, showing them what Jesus Christ did is, is still applicable for them. And, you know, people's lives have, have been changed, you know, just mm -hmm. wonderfully, dramatically. It's been an amazing thing to see. Of course, we know that he does that. Uh -huh. uh, the gospel still works, but to see it actually played out in people's lives in the Portland community, is, uh, it's been really, really a blessing and, and amazing to see it. So, you know, God's, God can still do his work. Absolutely. And it's that same thing we were talking about. It's that you don't necessarily have to beat the Bible over the head for if their lifestyles don't agree with the word of God, which they're unsafe people. Right. So the unsafe people are going to live as unsafe people yes. do. And you show them Jesus, and you don't have to water down the gospel or the doctrine, which our pastor does a great job here, where you can still preach the whole counsel of God. You can just dip it in some honey first. Yeah. And you still tell them, hey, sin is sin, and you don't have to focus on one. You can focus on a bunch of other abominations or whatever they might be that the Word of God talks about. And it's that same thing. We give them the gospel. We give them Jesus' love as he would love them. And the Lord will do the work. The Lord will do the convicting. And we just preach the whole counsel of God in a way that, you know, is grace seasoned with salt. And that's what we want to try to convey here in the Northwest. And thank you so much, Pastor Robinson, for that. And just kind of just those words of encouragement. And then just, you know, obviously there's a great need. People still need to get saved here and worldwide. Um, obviously here we have, you know, a very high population in the Northwest. And it's growing rapidly. Yes. People want to move here. People want to live here. I guess they like the rain. Um <laughs> But it's that same thing that we want to just continue to minister to those in the Northwest. And we just, uh, through this next few podcasts, we want to continue to just highlight on a few of those that the need out here and what we're doing in the Northwest. So thank you so much, Pastor Robinson, for coming. Um, if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, you can do that or hit the bell and to get notifications. We try to do these weekly. Thank you so much for tuning in.